Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my February wrap up, which actually has quite a few books in here that I don't have to show you because they were library books or borrow box books. So, oh, and some of them I can't even talk about because they were for the Booktube Prize. Shall we talk about those ones first and just say what they were? So I can't talk to you about Loop or How to Order the Universe or magma, or strange beasts of China. I've got to get the reading journal nowadays. It makes, you know, without this, I'd forget everything. <sighs> Firstly, I read A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood, and I had to look this book up because although I only read it in February, I have completely forgotten it. And then when I was reading the blurb, I remembered this book. I thought the writer wrote poignantly, I thought that the writer managed to capture a moment in time and the way in which homosexual relationships or homosexual people would have been perceived in the time in which this book was released. I can understand the importance of this book. However, it also left me feeling cold and I didn't really care or the book in the end, I just felt like it exists, but it wasn't necessarily a book for me. It wasn't written in a style that I personally could engage with. And once again, um, in terms of reviews like this, it's not me saying that this is a bad book in any way. Uh, this is a book that is seen as a classic and there are tons of people who have adored this book and it has become incredibly meaningful to them and this isn't to detract from their experiences. Personally, it wasn't a book for me and that's okay. And if I could remember it, we would be able to have a much more thorough discussion about this text. Uh, next, I read my own book, Royally Doris, and this was just in terms of getting it ready to edit, and there was a lot that needed editing, including page 89, in which I accidentally spoiled the conclusion to the first part of the book, but that has been changed. Then I read Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, and again, this was written in a rather to me, dry writing style that I didn't particularly care for. Indeed, the reason that I read much fewer books this month than in January is because the, the books that I started this month with proved to be books that I did not want to pick up. And unfortunately, that's how I felt about Giovanni's Room. I did not care for the writing style. I felt as though the plot, what little was there, was not really explored well and it was a bit too chaotic and all over the place for my liking and thus I didn't like it. I didn't. And similarly to A Single Man by Isherwood, I can't really recall much about it other than it bored me and I did not want to pick the book up. Next I read This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Mialik and this was a buddy read with my friend Charlie, formerly of Charlie Brook, and this follows the character of Bilal whose mother upon her deathbed has asked him to build a mosque. He lives in a rather conservative English village and this book brings him choosing to build this mosque brings out the worst in people and shows how white people especially conservative white people can be accepting of minority groups only if those minorities almost anglicize themselves and try to prove their whiteness uh, i think that given the recent conversations we've seen based around the countryside and the um, way that people of various ethnic minorities can feel excluded from the countryside and there have been reports about this I believe it's not just been in the Farmer's Guardian and Country Bell but there are even books about this that shedding light on this through a novel was a good idea. This was a rather quaint parochial read that dealt with some difficult themes and I could almost 
see where things were going to go. I could see how a certain twist was going to happen and I was also somewhat reminded of Royally Doris in terms of certain themes that happen within the book. There is a big thing about grief and how grief affects people within the book and I thought that that was done well. I found myself reminded of the archers in the tone and the scope of it. We don't just follow one character, we go into the lives of all the people who are living in this village who are important to the narrative and it works. If you're a fan of the archers then this is a bit of a soap opera in a book. But by no means was this the best book in the world. It wasn't wondrous, it was just a basic tale that did what it set out to do. It wasn't extraordinary by any means but it was good and I liked it but it's not necessarily one that I'd see the need to revisit. I think that the themes the author was discussing were explored well and I was glad to see them put down in fiction. It was a bit basic and I felt like the climax and resolution came out of nowhere to try and wrap up the story because I feel as though it had got a bit too unwieldy for the author to properly figure out and that will come with more experience I think um, and being able to tie all these threads together will come with time. I think that it just the skill and craft needed to do this resolution well was not there yet. Uh, then I read An Experiment in Love by Hilary Mantel which I'm not going to review here because I did an entire blog about it but this was another book that I did not care for. Indeed February was filled with books I didn't care for so if you didn't realise 10 minutes in where this was going, you should know by now. Uh, then I read Pizza Girl, which is by an author, and I can't remember who by. And Pizza Girl follows this teenage protagonist who has got pregnant and works at this pizza delivery place. One day this woman rings up and she's moved into the area and her son desperately wants a pizza with pickles on it. And this begins, this girl developing an obsession with this woman and because of how terrible her own life is she decides that this woman's life must be terrible as well. It's a very fast energetic read that wasn't for me, was in a style that I don't particularly care for either but I can understand why it would have its fans. I think that had I been about 10 years younger I might have enjoyed this book then but now I just felt like the, the book just felt a bit adolescent for me I just I, I it just it didn't work maybe it should feel adolescent because it's a teenager talking and I don't know I just I don't understand it I just I did not care for it I the author had a lot to explore and I think that sometimes you can explore a lot in a short piece of fiction and I think that what the character was going through had to be explored in this very fast manner in order to keep up the momentum that the author was creating. I just didn't feel like any of the characters had much agency or much going for them and again it, this was one where it was a tale of grief and how grief can make people behave but I don't know whether it worked. Then I read The Gunslinger by Stephen King, which is the first book in the Dark Tower series. I did this because I was wondering whether to get rid of all the books I have by Stephen King. I started reading King in 2018 and I read a few that year and haven't read any since. I got this from the charity shop alongside the rest in the series and hadn't touched them. started reading this because I'd heard that it was a bit like a western and I was enjoying the way that this book started. I don't particularly like where the book ended so I didn't go on and read the second immediately. This one follows someone called Roland I think and Roland is the last gunslinger and in the beginning he ends up going to somebody and starts telling his story and you get to see stories of people who must have been important to him in the past and I like this because it did lend itself well to this western style of storytelling of tales within tales. I like that in a book. You don't really know who this person is pursuing is and I think that this is, in terms of the style of writing, I think that I liked the way that King wrote in this book. 
and I like the small bits of mysticism and magic that were included alongside the tale that King was telling, which could be a traditional Western. And I, having read the introduction, I understood what the author was trying to do. It made sense to me almost because oftentimes fantasy fiction in England is based on where we came from in the past and the mythology of our own past. And America has a lot to do with the almost cowboys style-esque type thing. Also, it was the fact, what was it he said? Let me find it. He said he was inspired by The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. The Good, The Bad and The Ugly is one of a few westerns which I will give the time of day to. Uh, I was brought up on westerns, my father still watches them nowadays. Lonesome Dove is one of my favourite books. So I wanted to see how King would go about blending a western and blending fantasy. I don't think he's got it here yet. I've heard that you have to read the series on to really get behind it. It's not the best start to a series. <sighs> I'd hoped for something like Sebastian de Castell's Spellslinger series. I didn't particularly care for that, but I just meant in terms of tone. This is perhaps more philosophical or literary at the moment before it's going to get into the more fantastical part. I don't know, someone said I should have read The Stand before this. I went to my library to get The Stand, only to discover that two days before deciding that I wanted to read that book, they got rid of their entire horror section and the book that I wanted to read had just been shipped off to Chester and they won't be getting the horror section back. So that's fun. And then the best book. This is the best book that I read in February. This is the book that you should probably go out and buy. Really? if you're going to get any out of this list, because it was well written and it did what it set out to do. And I was impressed by the author's craft with this one. And this book is a children's book, a middle grade book that came out at the start of March, The Last Firefox by Lee Newbery. I received a NetGalley edition of this a few months back and finally got around to reading it at the end of the month. This book follows Charlie, who is a young boy who is being bullied at school. He's due to leave primary school and set off to high school, so he's in that space where he's already feeling a few fears. And then his fathers tell him that they are planning on adopting another child, which gives him a lot of anxiety because he doesn't know whether he can be a good older brother to this forthcoming child. Enter Cadno, the Firefox, who is brought from another world for safety, and Charlie happens to be the person who ends up having to be the Firefox's guardian. You get a tale in which you get to see a young man recognise that confidence isn't just something that you have within yourself, that confidence comes from friendships and loving healthy relationships with one's parents. I liked that here we had a gay couple as parents, but they're just Charlie's dad's. It's nothing sensationalised, it just is. It's there. It's not commented upon. It's just natural for Charlie and I think that that was a great way of doing things and probably, you know, apt for 2021 that we are seeing that representation inside middle grade fiction. Not only that though, I was impressed by the friendships that Charlie has with his friends and the confidence he displays in recognising that he needed help. Alongside that we had active prose. In the beginning, I can't rem let's look see if I can remember what it was, uh, there was something that happened in the beginning anyway where the author managed to get, convey information to the reader and did it through action and I thought I wish I had done something similar in my own books. I was envious of the way that the author had written that. I think in terms of middle grade fiction, it doesn't leave too many questions. As with all good middle grade fiction, you just have to accept it and move on. Do we need to know how the Firefox got here from another world? No. Do we need to know all the inner workings of everything and the magic? No. It's just happened. The people are accepting it. And what this tale is about is just how Charlie and Cadno are going to help one another get over their fears and their anxieties and actually work together to become the best people that they can be, the best versions of themselves. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. 
I thought that this was a stunning piece of middle grade fiction and I can understand why it's ended up becoming one of Waterstone's books of the month and I am wishing the author every success because um, when it comes to middle grade this is the sort of thing that I think you need. Had this book been around when I was a child this is another one that I would have read and reread every weekend because it has action and it has adventure and throughout the entirety of this book I found myself envisaging those um, CBBC after school television shows that I would watch similar to Tracy Beaker where you could just have an entire series of Charlie and his friends trying to keep Cadno's identity a secret from those around them whilst being pursued, being pursued by, well I can't remember, a Grendelock was it? Yeah, the Grendelock. The Grendelock. A great name for a villain and if you like middle grade fiction you should go and read it. Anyway, them's the books. I didn't really have much to say about them because I don't really like a lot of them but we ended the month on a high and that was a good thing because it seems that that has set us back on a good trajectory and in March I seem to have only read good books so far. So if you've read any of these books and would like to discuss them in the comments please feel free to do so. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time that is all.